I first started out trying to just understand the racial landscape that adolescents navigate online. And so one of the first studies was a study of uh, race-related language in monitored versus unmonitored chat rooms. And we were just trying to see how uh, race comes up in the conversations. And what came up that sort of propelled my research forward was a Latina adolescent who was victimized for the entire time. And she pleaded with the perpetrator, please stop. And you know, she'd say, no me gustan los racistas, I don't like racist. And then she said, I'm having heart palpitations. And so I wondered how those experiences with race online might impact uh, adolescents' mental health. Um, and so at the time, there were no uh, measures to assess online racial discrimination. And so I created the online victimization scale. And we're finding that Online racial discrimination is associated with depressive symptoms, it's associated with uh, anxiety, and what they call externalizing behaviors, so rule-breaking behaviors and aggression. And we also found the more time adolescents spend online and, and the more they experience online racial discrimination, the more externalizing behaviors they engaged in. And what we're finding though is that if you've explored your identity, you're less likely to engage in those externalizing behaviors because we're finding adolescents are getting messages about their intelligence online that I think informs their academic identity. Practitioners need to be aware that these things are happening and also engage students on these race-related issues in the classroom, because otherwise I don't think we'll be able to address the problem. More and more we're seeing at the district level and at state levels, people are concerned with this issue of cyberbullying more broadly. And we have Digital Citizenship Week where people are trying to help students to, to think about their behavior online before they actually act. And then there's also anti-bullying programs across the country where people are explicitly taught you know, how to engage with their peers online. But neither of those efforts include an explicit focus on race. And I think that, bec well, because race, racial discrimination is so common online, we need to explicitly target race-related experiences in these types of programs. I think the, the field of uh, online victimization broadly needs a lot more studies of the protective factors that may buffer youth against some of the negative outcomes that we're seeing. I think the field is just now starting to um, publish studies that look at protective factors, social support, uh, coping, and um, we definitely need to better understand how culture and cultural assets, the role that they play in um, studies in, in online victimization. So the, the work that I'm doing right now is trying to create digital tools and an app more specifically that would help you to critique some of the race-related messages that they encounter and then ultimately be able to uh, cope with those messages. So we want to provide them with a, a toolkit that they can use so when they see online racial discrimination, they have a counter message right, that um, is more positive, that counters the dominant messages that they're getting about their ethnic group. What we're hoping the app will do is to minimize some of the negative outcomes with mental health, um, behavior, and academic performance that we're seeing uh, typically associated with online racial discrimination. And hopefully, if the um, app is successful, we'll see them being used across the country and um, youth will be able to 
um, in some ways. They'll have a toolkit to a toolkit for dealing with those messages um, when they encounter them online.